the physical world around us is full of color, sound, its different objects have got different temperature, their tastes are different and we really perceive all these things in the physical world through our five sensory organs. These five sensory organs we know are our eyes, our ears, our nose and our tongue and of course our skin. These five organs really help us to know the world around us. Different aspects of the physical world are really being detected by these sensory organs. Now, this naturally these sensory organs have got immense importance for us. Let us take a closer look at their broad functioning from physics point of view. First, let us start with our eyes. Our eyes are essentially detectors, detectors of signals. You know that we use artificially prepared different types of detectors for different purpose. We have for example, camera film where photographs are being taken. But if you really look at our eyes, these pair of eyes are doing an excellent work as detectors because they can detect what we call light or visible light. Actually, the vis so called visible light is only a part of the huge spectrum known as electromagnetic spectrum. It has got very a very small portion, it has got large number of divisions, but only a very small portion we detect by our eyes. If you take a look at this entire physical spec entire spectrum of the electromagnetic waves you will find there are we start if we start from very short wavelength range there are gamma rays then comes x rays then ultraviolet and then a very narrow region of wavelength only 400 nanometer to roughly 750 nanometer these range of wavelengths are being detected by our eyes and subsequently it passes on to infrared region, then microwaves, then radio waves. Now, when we detect this part of electromagnetic radiation, a fantastic thing really happens. The entire world opens up before our eyes. So, we can see the things around us because those have been illuminated by the electromagnetic waves which our eyes can detect. Say if some microwave falls on a particular object and if we keep our eyes open we would not be able to see it. So, our eyes are detectors and these electromagnetic radiation or the light waves they are the signals. Basically we can see that all the sensory organs really operate in this way. The sensory organs are like detectors and they detect certain types of signals. Light is a type of signal, electromagnetic wave they do not need any medium for propagation these are being detected by our eyes. Of course, there are certain issues. If we really orient I mean we need to orient the detectors in the right way to receive the signal. For example, I should show you a small experiment. You can see that if the light rays are coming from say right from my right 
and if I kept my eyes towards left or in any other direction I would not be able to see the light. So, proper orientation of the detector is very important and our body like ne our neck and maybe we, uh, it can it can help us to turn our detectors the eyes in different direction or we can really turn the entire body over our legs. So, so that we can really detect the radiation from different directions. Once we have this detector and the radiation there are still more certain conditions which needs to be fulfilled for the what you call viewing of an object for seeing an object. Number 1 these detectors that is our eyes we have the ability to close our eyes we can shut down the detectors naturally what you can expect is that no signal even if it is present suppose the signal is coming from around the from all around this room but if i close my eyes i won't be able to see anything that means signal is present but the detector is really closed not functioning for that time that is exactly what happens when we sleep or we close down our eyes on the other hand suppose we have kept our eyes open detector is ready to receive the signal and we have entered a room of complete darkness by complete darkness I mean there is no visible electromagnetic wave available in that room. The objects of the room has not been illuminated by radiation which our eyes can detect naturally if we keep our eyes we shall see it is a complete darkness that will imply that our detectors are ready to receive the signals, but the signals are absent. So, we have to remember that these detector and signal this relationship is there at least not only for our eyes for the other organs, but sometimes they this relationship is slightly different. Let us switch over to our ears you know we have two ears and it can receive signals, but these signals are entirely different from the signals received by and detected by our eyes because our ears can detect what is known as mechanical waves. That means if there is certain mechanical vibration and there is a medium in between that vibration is propagated and reached our ears our ears will be able to detect them of course there are certain conditions one very well known condition possibly everyone knows that the frequency of this mechanical vibration this frequency needs to be between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So, if any vibration has a frequency which is less than 20 hertz that means, it is oscillate completing less than 20 oscillations in one second that implies its frequency our ears will not be able to detect them that vibration will be there the wave will be generated, but our detect detectors that means, our ears would not be able to detect them. On the other hand if the frequency is very high I mean it goes above 20,000 hertz once again our ears will fail to detect them. So, like our eyes which can detect electromagnetic waves only in the range of I have already mentioned only in the range of 400 nanometer to 750 nanometer our ears can also detect frequencies lying between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz and as it happens in electromagnetic waves there are different parts of the same family they are named in a different way for these mechanical waves the waves which has got frequency less than 20 hertz is normally referred to as infrasonic or subsonic frequencies whereas, if we really 
go to the upper side the frequencies above 20,000 hertz are referred to as ultrasonic frequencies. Now once again the orientation of ears come suppose some sound is coming from my right direction I can listen it if if I do not really close my right eye remember one thing that like eyes our eyes we do not have any cover that we automate can automatically apply to our ears. So, if we want to cover our ears and want to really stop the entry of the waves we will have to cover it by some other means maybe by putting our hand palm over there. Now, once again it is a case of detector and signal and the signals which are being detected by our ears are known as sound waves they have got a special name and that is why we have said any frequency less than the frequency of the sound audible sound that our ears receive is known as infrasonic and anything beyond and the higher range beyond 20,000 hertz is known as ultrasonic. So, once again we have to remember that by turning our head or say by sitting down or going up we can really change the orientation of the detectors that is our ears. Sometimes you may find we put our hand like this to listen a feeble signal that helps our hand acts as a reflector and that can reflect the that weak sound into our ears and we can listen and sometimes this proves to be very effective. And these detectors once again both the detectors I must say our eyes or our ears with age they develop defects means their ability reduces their sharpness reduces and uh, we really use different gadgets including the spect spect spectacles some um, to help ourselves to keep that level of viewing or sometimes we need to at a, at a, as an aged person we need to use this what we call hearing aids to keep that hearing level more or less normal so that we can pick up all the sound this way. Now apart from these two ears and eyes if you really look at we have one nose but it has got two nostrils. Now the our nose receives what you call smell and what is smell? Smell is essentially some molecules those are coming and entering our nose and giving a particular sensation to our brain. Sometimes we feel the smell is good sometimes we do we do not like it. So, the difference between the functioning of the ears and the eyes with the functioning of the nose is that it is not a signal that should come to the nose, but it is the real molecule that should come and enter the nose then and only then we can it can detect certain things. So, we quite often find if there is a source of say bad smell, but at a very long distance we do not get the smell we can see that that something is rotten over there or we can possibly really listen certain sound if necessary, but we do not get the smell until and unless the real molecules carrying that smell so to speak reach our eyes uh, sorry reach our nose. Now this is a very basic difference in the functioning between the other two organs like eyes and the um, ears with the nose because it is also a detector, but it must have the real thing inside it. It cannot it does operate at a distance so to speak in the sense that if the molecules can really come in by through air they can come into the into our nose and flowing of air really matters here. 
when the flow of air if it is flowing towards us the smell comes easily and we can detect the things. Similar thing happens with the other two detectors that is our tongue and our skin. Tongue has got a very special ability to taste the things. The way we distinguish the taste of different objects, the things we eat or things we otherwise use, our tongue can distinguish them from one point of view. Our eyes can tell its color, our nose can tell it smell and our tongue can talk about its taste and taste is quite often is some sort of an abstract concept so to speak. You can say that this is very hot, you can say this is very delicious, you can say this is very sour and this is very bitter and so many other things in between. Once again if you take a closer look you will find that we really need to bring the object in contact with the tongue otherwise it does not get the taste it is not a case of signal. Once again you are really bringing in the thing really on the tongue and you are getting the taste. Interestingly sometimes we feel that without testing suppose we have seen a very delicious food we like it we have not yet tested it we have seen it possibly some smell has gone in, inside our nose and we, we know the taste so we start really uh, saliva comes out from our tongue and that sort of things happen. But real test you can have only if it, if it has really touched our tongue in a similar way the skin that can assess the temperature that is very important for us because we know our body temperature is has to be very regulated you know it is nearly 37 38 degrees Celsius for a normal person and this temperature body temperature should not vary within say plus minus 4 or 5 degrees Celsius then it becomes a very dangerous situation. So, we can our skin can really assess the temperature suppose we enter a room where some air conditioning is there and the temperature is say close to 22 degrees Celsius we shall immediately feel that the room is cold this is because our skin can feel it how does it really happen it happens like this we have to go back to the fundamental principle of heat the hotter body gives away heat to the colder bodies. So, whenever I enter the colder room the I lose some heat from my body, but of course this brings in comfort to a certain extent if that temperature is not very low. Of course, we know that if the temperature becomes lower and lower we really need to protect our body temperature and we put on heavy woolen garments. So, our it is the sense of temperature that is being conveyed to us through our skin. So, skin is a very important sensory organ it can assess whether the surrounding is hot or cold this hot or cold is really relative relative in the sense whether it is hotter than the than my body temperature or cooler than my body temperature. Now, if we really sum up the entire thing that if we really look at these five sensory organs our eyes, our ears, our nose, our tongue and our skin we can really look at their performances not only from biological point of view, but also from physics point of view and we shall always feel that we are having unique detector systems they may be different from some of the animals some of the animals may have 
even stronger ability to get smell some of the animals may have even stronger ability to listen now they have limitations from in the sense that for example in for years we cannot listen if the signal is very feeble as i've already mentioned in case of eyes but all said and done these five sensory organs are unique in the sense they have helped humanity not only to survive over the years but have helped humanity to thrive and flourish and so to speak rule over the entire animal kingdom so the functioning of these five sensory organs can also be seen from the as some sort of a uh, physical systems uh, uh, not only physiological system but as physical systems built in uh, in our body and we are making use of them every day every time everywhere let us take this example this is a source of laser light and light from this source is falling on the screen which is essentially behaving like a detector now if we really rotate this source one can find the light will be going in other direction and there will be no light on the detector on the other hand if we really keep the light on the detector and then start moving the detector then it may so happen the light is coming from the same direction but the de detector is not in that direction so it cannot detect the light so for the detection of the light or electromagnetic waves detector must receive the light from the source now this source is actually an illuminated body and light is getting reflected from there and that is exactly the way we can see the objects around us the advantage of our eyes with that is that we can really orient it conveniently suppose i kept my eyes were looking in this direction the light is coming from this direction we can really shift or we can really rotate to get the light on this detector in fact because of this ability we are in a position to see so many things around us albeit that takes a certain span of time because we need to rotate our either our neck or the entire body towards the source of light and our detectors can then start functioning with the help of our skin we can understand the nature of different surfaces suppose the surface of this table appears to be smooth that information is really conveyed by our skin another surface may appear to be rough another surface may appear to be even more rough all these sensations are really being conveyed by our skin and these are also very important sensations in our life in different spheres of life and if you really look deeper into it you will find that the persons very unfortunately who have lost their vision they more depend on this touch and that is really being in information some information or essentially some feelings are really being conveyed by this touch that is conveyed by the skin to them so skin really performs another very important function as sensory organ thank you